want to get you in. Everybody is in the game. So it's fair. Yes. You know, janta bhi damned, public bhi damned. It's a game politicians play. So we should not ask question. So he said, is that the way the cookie crumbles? So the ridiculousness of the argument lies in its whataboutery. It is no one's contention that the BJP is as pure as the driven snow and the Congress is the only corrupt party. No one's contention. But to constantly condone the corruption of the Congress by saying, but other people are also corrupt, it's a stupid argument. And it has no tenacity and it has no purpose. I have four points to make. Number one, I said this on your channel when Partho Chatterjee was raided, that when people said, oh, ED is vindictive, ED found cash. They didn't exactly go and plant Sandesh, and the Sandesh by PC Sarkar's magic converted to cash. There was cash there, as there is cash in Savo's house. Should we be castigating these people? The answer is yes. Number two, Sanjay Jha talks about electoral bonds. Yes, that's an issue that's been highlighted foisted upon the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court has whether gone into it, not gone into it, has been seized of the matter. Let the courts adjudicate on issues that are contentious rather than let TV channels and TV debates do that. Number three, it is no one's argument that corruption in India belongs to only one section of society. But should we not have an agenda of snuffing it out? The answer is obvious, we should. If people are found with their hands in the till, it doesn't Navika matter whether that money came from country liquor or it came from sewage pipes. The reality is that it is illegal, unfounded, and has no substance legally of being there. That in itself is an absolute shame. The fourth, and this is where I want to highlight a particular issue. Just like the BJP, the Congress also keeps talking about corruption, corruption, corruption. Why are they silent today? I'd have given Rahul Gandhi full marks if he had actually stepped up to the plate and said, until investigation, we are, no pun intended, suspending Deepak Sahu. That would have, to my mind, been a tremendous stroke of genius. Because what would have happened is, he would have shown leadership in snuffing out corruption. But that's his prerogative. He's the leader of the party. He's entitled to do that. My no. limited point is that this country cannot afford public corruption of the kind that we have seen over time. People have accused the BJP of being a laundry machine. The BJP has neither denied it nor accepted it. People are today seeing what's happening with, with money being found at politicians' homes. You remember the good old days of Sukram? You remember the one crore suitcase for Narasimha Rao with Harshad Mehta? We have had a history, but we can't go back to history to say that, oh, we had it in the past, so therefore it's justified now. The country has moved on. Today, people are going to be accountable, and for all the right reasons that you mentioned, whether machines work or don't work. You know, I'll tell you one thing. I have hated them, but the one thing you could have always said about the communists was that they weren't corrupt. You know, and if they were, their maximum corruption was an extra sandesh or a very ill-gotten soggy samosa because I'm talking about the Bengal experience. Today, it's 300 crores is then being, you know, indexed oh. to, okay, but iske ghar mein toh utna mila tha. Binarai. Now, for 300 crores to be found, Sanjay and Manoj and Vivek and Jairat, can you imagine the amount of margin? If 300 crores is the margin of money that's coming into one particular individual's house, can you imagine the actual scale of corruption? I'm